getting breakfast is finally here. Yas! Well, unless you play on the Nintendo Switch, in which case you have to wait just a little bit longer. But today I'm going to be telling you why it's going to be more than worth the wait. I'd say I'm well over 10 hours into the game at this point, and I'm going to tell you all the reasons why I have been loving this game. First of all, let's talk about the price of this game, because this is one of the things that surprised me the most about it. It is just over £15. Yep, you heard that right. Fifth. £15.49p. I was shocked. Anyway, let's get into the game itself. Bed and Breakfast sees you a bear run a bed and breakfast. Although ironically, it took me well over five hours to get to the breakfast part of the bed and breakfast. But anyway, I would also like to take this moment to have an appreciation of the main character, Hank. He is so cute so relatable and the funniest part is if you have no clothes on the guests will be scared of you now i'm not gonna lie i haven't quite figured out if the guests are scared of you because you're naked or because you're a bear all i do know is when you put clothes on the guests seem very okay with you so i'll let you decide which one of the two it is you're in charge of literally everything about the bnb you build the rooms, you furnish and decorate them, and further down the line, you also build things like kitchens, bathrooms, and function rooms like bars and campsites. You're also in charge of filling those rooms with customers each and every day. The customers themselves have demands, like how decorated and comfortable the room is, and if the room is next to a well-furnished bathroom or not. And it's your job to assign them to the right room to maximize your ratings. As you progress, you unlock more items that increase these ratings. You can buy them from the dump from a sketchy raccoon named Turk. Given how witty the dialogue has been in this entire game, I'm gonna guess his name is Turk, because it's Tom Nook shoved together in one word. I love it. You can also craft items, and to do that, it requires you to walk around and grab resources. Now, my biggest issue with walking around and grabbing resources was, as people have described it on Twitter, the great iron nail shortage. Most of my day was spent running around trying to find iron nails because they are by far the rarest ingredient I could find. However, I just went on the Bear and Breakfast Twitter and they have said they acknowledge the fact that the iron nails are incredibly rare and they will be addressing that in the next patch. So hopefully this won't be an issue when it comes out on the Nintendo Switch. So far, it kind of sounds like a standard management game. However, it's different to all the management games I've played in one humongous way that makes a huge amount of difference for a cozy gamer like me and that's the pacing there is literally no rush to do anything and zero consequences for taking this game as slowly as you'd like in my playthrough i haven't gone bankrupt once i've given people bad rooms and all it does is slightly lower your rating which is pretty easy to get back up i actually feel like in my first three hours I was feeling a bit meh about the game overall, and that's because I was playing it like I would do a normal management game. I was trying to maximize the space by making the smallest rooms possible to get the most amount of guests in to give me the most amount of money. And that is not how this game is designed to be played at all. You unlock new areas and new items slowly, so you can enjoy decorating each building and each house before increasing the number of mechanics to take into consideration. Each building is more or less self-sufficient when you leave it alone too, so once again, no stress. If you're off in another location doing things over there, you don't have to worry about the previous locations going to ruin. They won't, they're fine. Exploring is also a large part of this game too, not very common in management style games. Each area of the map you unlock has different resources to gather, and eventually you'll have a B&B &B in every section of the map. Each B&B &B in each area has guests with different requirements, requiring each of the builds to be slightly different. For example, the first area you're in, all they really need is a bed. Then when you unlock your next area, they require not only a bed, but also a bathroom. And then when you unlock the third area, they'll require a bed, a bathroom and a kitchen. And so it goes on. The map itself isn't that huge, but that's one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like doing your Animal Crossing dailies. Your island isn't huge, but you actually enjoy walking around and collecting all the resources you need to do each day. It's a fun little routine, which us cozy gamers love. There's also a story to this game as well, on top of everything we've already been talking about. It may have been a little little text heavy at the start but i also think that's because i was so eager to get to the management part of the game it's also incredibly witty and painfully relatable 
<laughs> Crumpy on the outside, but surprisingly... Even more so on the inside! The gameplay to story ratio definitely leveled out about five hours into it, and I think that's when the game really came into its own. As I mentioned before, another mechanic that gets introduced later on is the kitchen, and that means cooking, which you are also in charge of. You pick fruit and veg from the surrounding area, buy recipes, and carry them out through this really unique card placing mechanic. The more cooking appliances you have in your kitchen, the more cooking techniques you can use, and the more dishes are available. And then once you've made the food, you just shove them in the buffet and go about your day because of the game's slow pace i felt like every single hour i played this game it got better and better with every building needing slightly more thought than the last whilst remaining completely stress-free there are no warnings no alerts nothing you can completely take this game at your own pace with no consequences no stress and i found that so unbelievably refreshing in a management game one thing to bear in mind get it is that this is a third person management game in normal management games you kind of just control the camera and nothing else but in this game you play as hank this does mean that if you want to go and check out your other b and b to make some changes you physically have to walk the adorable hank there to the location or fast travel with buses which took a little bit of getting used to as a management connoisseur as always this game had a few hiccups although as i mentioned before bear and breakfast are incredibly active on twitter and you can report bugs to them so come the switch release some of these might not be the way they are right now for example i found the map feature to be a little bit annoying you couldn't zoom in or out to find stuff you had to scroll around in the very zoomed in map and of course i came across some bugs but i think in these types of games the bugs are just funny like not only did i trap a woman this man was uncontrollably spinning and did not want to stop i went out the area came back he was still spinning blessed <laughs> my only other gripe with this game is it was both hand holdy and not hand holdy at the same time let me try and explain like some of the things like for example the cooking it would teach you it almost painfully slow it would make you do each step individually and then every time you did one of the steps you'd have to run back and speak to the person to progress to the next step but then other times you were left with no quest and no idea what to do next i am not ashamed to admit that because there were zero walkthroughs because i was playing this day one i had to resort to scrolling through the directory on twitch finding someone who was further ahead than i was rewinding their vod to find out what i had done wrong do that and then i could progress the story overall i am having a fantastic time with this game and i think the best part is outside of the main story there's quite a lot of side quests to do and ways to fill your days if you don't want to progress directly even if you finish the story in one of the locations there are side quests you can do to keep on building up that one location further it is worth noting though some of the side quests will need you to complete a story quest to be able to do them but they are fun to do nonetheless if you go into this game expecting a typical management game then this probably isn't the game for you but if you're looking for a cozy game that has elements of management inside of it this game is perfect it ticks all of the boxes for being a cozy staple and is honestly great value for money at 15 pounds as i said i am only 10 hours in but i'm nowhere near getting to all the locations meaning that there are plenty more mechanics that i haven't even got a hold of yet and as i said there are a ton of side quests on top of the main story itself this is truly the most stress-free management game i have ever played and it's going to be right at home on the nintendo switch oh and by the way if you're looking for more cozy games with farming elements on the nintendo switch then click right here it has a whole list of them for you to try out i'll see you next time bye